from the home of Lakeside Beef. The best beef you can get in a can, my friend. With packed, packed with nutrition, vitamins, and mmm, mmm, good taste. <laughs> this is Kurt Berglund with your Pine Tar Baseball Negro Leagues Reveal Show with lots of information for you about how to get your own copy of the set and what you can expect in the set. <laughs> it's all coming right now. Let's start with the basics. If you are interested in this set, then you must be interested in taking a trip to ttlbaseballgame.com, which is the home of Pine Tar Baseball, ttlbaseballgame.com. Now, let's talk about the set that you can get starting on Tuesday, I'm going to say, but it could be Wednesday before I deliver. So don't get the undies in a bundle. These are 36 cards of the greatest players from the Negro Leagues. 12 of them are pitchers, primarily. 24 of them are primarily position players. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. You will get four sheets of nine cards on a PDF sent to you. You will also get a PDF three-page document that tells you more about who these players were in the event that some of them might be unfamiliar to you. All right. If you request it, you will also get a free set of Pine Tar instructions that I will send to you, but you can get right now on the ttl.baseballgame.com website under the free to try tab. If you download the 2020 players that I created, the end of the 2020 players are all the instructions for Pine Tar Baseball. So you can get a free game of Pine Tar Baseball. You can get the 2020 projection players that I set up. You can get four free teams from that same website under free to try. All four free. Did I mention they're free? Now, if you're interested in this Negro League set, or you decide later that you're interested in this Negro League set, all you have to do is to email me at berglundkurt at gmail.com. No spaces, no dashes, no periods, no punctuations, no exclamation marks. berglundkurt at gmail.com. And here it is. All right. Now, when you send me that email, you request what you what you want. Tell me if you want the instructions for the game. Tell me if you just want the Negro Leagues cards and the document that I wrote that tells you more about the players. Or tell me if you want both of those items. Hmm. <laughs> okay, let's talk more about this side without dropping it. First, did you notice my 1933 Negro Leagues All-Star Game sweatshirt? You think a chump puts together these videos? Huh? Huh? There's themes. There's themes, I tell ya. Themes. All right. Let's talk about the players in the set. In this set, you get 36 players, which can be divided into two teams of 18. Two teams of 18. All right, now you can divide them any way you like. But we know from our history that Negro League's teams varied between 14 on the low end to 18, sometimes even higher roster sizes. 18's a good middle point, maybe on the high end even. 
So you get to make, construct two 18-man teams from the 36 cards that you get and roll yourself some pine tar baseball. Now, I've made 12 players that are primarily pitchers. What you will want to do is to make sure that you're looking carefully at the other positions that, that, that those pitchers can play, if there are any. Some of them play several other positions. Some of them can hit well, so you want to look at that and see if they might have value to you as a pinch runner or even a pinch bunter as well. If you've got an 18-man roster, you got to make use of the whole thing. And knowing the strengths and weaknesses of these great players is going to be part of the fun of the set. All right? So, in these 18-man sets, you get, for the most part, six-man pitching staffs. That means a three-man rotation and three relievers. Most of these men also relieved in the seasons that I've carded them for. I don't think there's anybody that just started. I don't think. They're not coming to me off the top of my head. There are two men who were pretty much relievers um, in the seasons that were carded uh, for you. And uh, so you'll want to spot them and identify them as potential closers, perhaps. So you have six pitchers on your 18-man roster. You have 20. You have 12 position players. There are enough for at least two catchers per team. There are four catchers carded. There's a fifth man who has a catcher rating. There are 11 infielders, but again, the infielders play multiple positions. So you're going to want to Pay attention to the other things those infielders can do. There are nine outfielders. One of them is Martin Digo, and he played, you may as well say, every position on the diamond. I believe he's carded at five spots, and one of them is as a pitcher. Um, so, and he's the 13th pitcher in the set, if you want to think of him that way. He is carded with a pitching rating, but he's primarily a right fielder in the season that uh, he's included in the set. He also played infield. He's got infield ratings. All right, let's talk about the cards themselves. Uh, for each player, they're third or fourth best season is selected for their hitting and or batting statistics. Third or fourth best season. So this is not a set where you get the best, the peak season of every player. I'm calling it the prime of every player, but not the peak of every player so that you get a glimpse of of what this guy was like when he was really good, but not at the absolute top of his game, which, based on how you roll dice, I mean, you could hit that, um, certainly with these cards. The defense, the steals, the, the throwing arm, uh, the bunting, the base running, those are career uh, averages. Those are career stats that I use to derive those ratings but the hitting and the pitching themselves are the third best so you're getting a sort of an all-time all-star look at some of these players now in developing this set and again we created this set to celebrate rob manfred's decision that the negro leagues are really a major league and are going to be recognized as such in 2021 I'm expecting a lot of dominoes to fall from that, and one of them is going to be a lot more statistical analysis and, and publicity for the stats from the Negro Leagues. There's a lot out there, but I think there's more to come. And so um, we'll see what happens with that. These cards are single column cards. These are not with lefty-righty splits because I don't, trust the lefty righty data yet but i do trust the aggregates and so you get 
one column cards right now, lefty righties combined for hitting for each player. We may be able to break that out more later in the year. One of the things that I'm definitely doing before the end of this year is expanding the size of the set. These are the first 36 cards in the set. I'm going to over 200. I, I came up with more than 200 players off the top of my head and looking at a few sources that need to be carded in this type of set. What that's gonna allow us to do is to have franchise all-star teams for the Negro Leagues with the players in their prime, just like these guys are. So this is the beginning of the growth of a much larger set that will be coming later this year. This is the first 36, but there's a lot more to come. Then we'll combine all those guys, bust them out into franchises, and we will have a franchise all-star set of Negro Leaguers. I'm very excited about that. I think the research uh, will more than support it, and you'll have something that will statistically give you the best of what the Negro Leagues offered, and you'll see that it's a very high quality of baseball. All right. There are two players of the 36 who are not prime players, but they are peak players, and there's reasons for that. We'll talk about them as we go through the reveal of each player in the set right now. Here we go through the list of the players in the set broken out by position, starting with the pitchers. Satchel Page. Slim Jones, who is one of the players that is not uh, at their peak. I'm sorry, at their prime, but he's at their peak. And the reason for that is Slim Jones had one phenomenal season in 1934, which led to the Philadelphia Stars winning the World Series. However, he had lots of personal demons, and he was dead by the age of 25. Um due to a major drinking problem. And so we are honoring him with just his peak season, which is 1934. There's another player that we'll get to that is like that as well. Just his peak year will be carded. Next pitcher, Smokey Joe Williams. Next, Hilton Smith. One of the guys who primarily are often used as a reliever in the set, although all these guys took a turn out of the bullpen. Next, Cannonball Dick Redding. Leon Day. Rube Foster. First seven pitchers are those men. Next pitcher, John Donaldson. Willie Foster, Rube's brother, but just as good a pitcher, maybe better. Bullet Joe Rogan, played many other positions. Ray Brown and Andy Cooper. Those are the 12 pitchers in the set, although Martin Digo is also in the set as well. He is a potential 13th pitcher. All right, catchers in the set. There are four primary catchers. There's one, there's a fifth catcher that we'll talk about in just a minute who is carded as a catcher but was not primarily a catcher. The men who are primarily catchers in the set are Josh Gibson, Biz Mackey, Louis Santop, and Roy Campanella. Those four men are the primary catchers in the set. All right, next come the, inf so we're right now, we're at 16 of the 36 players have been revealed. All right, let's go to the infield. Buck Leonard. 
and Mule Suttles. Suttles also played outfield. Uh, he is carded there as well. Leonard and Suttles are the primary first baseman in the set, but not the only ones. Middle infielders, Newt Allen, second base and short. Pop Lloyd, second base and short and first. Willie Wells, shortstop. Dick Lundy, second and short. I'm mean, short and second, I should say. Jackie Robinson is the other player in the set who is carded and like Slim Jones, uh, is at his peak on his card because Jackie Robinson had only one full year in the Negro Leagues. And we are carding his 1945 year. He is in the set. Ray Dandridge, as we move to third base, Ray Dandridge is at third. Judy Johnson, a third baseman. Judd Wilson is a multi-position player, um, first base and corner outfield spots as well um, for Judd. And uh, so third base, first base, and corner outfield spots. All right. Next, John Beckwith. Like Judd Wilson, he's a corner guy. He's also a backup catcher. Um, and so that uh, gives you a lot of positional versatility there as well. And the last of the infielders who also got some time in the outfield, Monty Irvin. That gives us... Uh, oh, um, 12 infielders. So we're up to 28 men right now. And now it's time for the outfielders. The outfielders in the set are Oscar Charleston, Turkey Stearns, Willard Brown, who's also an infielder, Martin Digo, who we've talked about, Pete Hill, who is also an infielder. Cristobal, Cristobal Torriente. Chino Smith, also an infielder. And Cool Papa Bell. To get a second position in the card set that I have created, you need 50 games or more at that secondary position. So even if it's a secondary outfield position, you still need to have 50 games or more at that spot. All right, now what are the cards gonna look like? Well, let's show you. These are examples of Negro Leagues cards from uh, the uh, Pine Tar Baseball website, uh, web page on Facebook. You can get this team for free right now also. It's the 1934 Philadelphia Stars, the World Series champions. This is an example of what a pine tar baseball card looks like. These cards that you will be getting uh, later this week uh, have more information on them, however. And I don't have a sample with me because I'm still playing with the formatting. But in the middle of the card, you, you can see that this is a one column card. This is a pitcher card. This is a one column batter card, much like the ones, the color is different, but the, the ones that you'll get in this set, one column as well. The difference is that in this middle column for hitters, you're gonna find out if this player is in the Hall of Fame and if so, what year he was inducted and a list of all the years he was an all-star if any. Now the Negro Leagues East-West game, their all-star game started in 1933. Some of the players were done with their careers or the prime of their careers before 1933. So they may not be in any all-star games, but the vast majority of these players have a number of years listed right down the middle of the card that tell you 
if they are and if they were an all-star in any seasons. All right. Same thing with the pitchers. Hall of Fame, yes or no, what year they were inducted, and then a list of their all-star seasons. So you're going to get one column, but then you're going to find some more information about them listed in the middle. In the PDF that you get from me about these players, I give you some background information about the players. It's not terribly long. And I also try and give you a comp, a comparable player from modern times that this player reminds me of, or the data leads me to think of this player as a good match with. Uh, I'll give you an example. For Slim Jones, I selected uh, Ron Guidry and Randy Johnson as comparables. Not nearly as long of a career, of course, but at his best, at his peak, that's the kind of pitcher we're talking about. And I did that, I think, for just about everybody except the guys at the very, very top, uh, like Josh Gibson and Oscar Charleston, who, frankly, it's kind of tough to go up with a comp for. That's what makes them great, is that there is no one quite like them. All right. Let's wrap this up. If you are interested in this set, uh, you have to let me know because the only way you can get it is to send me this email and tell me. In a month or so, I'm going to post it on uh, the Pine Tar Baseball Facebook page and it'll be able to be gotten there. However, I'm trying to put together an email database so that as this set expands over the course of 2021, I can easily contact people that are interested and you would be on that list. So it'll make communication much easier. It's also going to tell me something about, and I can't get this from Facebook, something about the level of interest that's really in the set. And so if you reach out to me, that'll give me some clue that there's folks that are really interested in receiving this set and might even give me some feedback about how they like it. So it's Berglund Kurt, put it up here, Berglund Kurt, B-E-R-G-L-A-N-D-K-U-R-T, Berglund Kurt at gmail.com. Berglundkurt at gmail.com. You can start emailing me right now. What will happen is when the set is ready to go, which will be sometime Tuesday or maybe Wednesday, I will send them out. I will send you um, a reminder on Facebook that you can go ahead and email me, uh, but I probably won't get to that until sometime on Tuesday. That pretty much covers this set. We are trying to honor the important decision that Rob Manfred has made about the Negro Leagues and to raise some awareness about what these wonderful players were like. We're trying to honor the players that actually played in the Negro Leagues so that they are never forgotten. And we're trying to have some fun playing pine tar baseball. We can accomplish all three of those things and maybe learn something about the game as we go along, the game of baseball, that would be wonderful. My name's Kurt Berglund. I thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I hope you're being safe. We got to stick together, people. And so long, everybody. <laughs>